During the scattered, piecemeal, and often interrupted writing process for Saturday Night Wrist, Gina Moreno wrote and released Fuck You, I Hope You Die sometime in 2006. It never made the album. It wasn't in the leaked demos either. It was actually hiding in plain sight as a track uploaded to Deftones' MySpace page. The track reflects Chino's gloomy and perhaps even depressed state of mind at that time, given the challenges in his family and band. But as we now know, Saturday Night Wrist was eventually released on Halloween 2006. The band's drug abuse, divorces, and disarray were over. Even when they were on tour, the band was ready to actually start writing new material. Chino spoke to Blabbermouth in September 2007, saying, Our working relationship is better than it's ever been before. As a result, everything has improved. Our friendships and our lives. We're all really happy now. The dark days were over. Or so we thought. It is and was unusual for Deftones to write while on tour. It wasn't completely unheard of, but it had almost become a ritual for the Sacramento boys to head back to their studio, The Spot, to write and record before they headed to a more established recording studio for that polished finish. While on tour with Duran Gray and the Fall of Troy, Deftones set up a room backstage every night to jam together. The summer tour kicked off on May 11, 2007 and ended on June 24. Of the jam sessions, Chino had this to say. We're going in there and playing as five of us in the room with just our instruments, no other distractions. That's how we started out basically when we first started the band. Us in the garage, no pro tools or anything to get us ahead of ourselves. We'd just play things over and over again until we remembered it. That's the rawest way you can do it, and the best, I think. We're kind of ahead of ourselves a little bit instead of getting off tour and then going in to write a record and feeling a lot of pressure and under the gun. It feels like we're already moving. Deftones began using Pro Tools for 2000's classic, White Pony. It was a choice that Moreno considered impersonal because the band wasn't jamming together as he believed they ought. This is yet another reason Chino's favorite album was Around the Fur, as it was created through the band jamming together, just as they began to do for this project. This seemed promising. Instead of lounging around as some bands do prior to writing a new record, Deftones were proactive and eager to turn out new material. In October 2007, the band headed to the spot to record, hang out, and for some much needed catharsis. One of the major contributing factors to Deftones' old strife was between Chino Moreno and Steph Carpenter on who was on riff writing duty. Chino chose to step down, allowing Carpenter to carry the creative output on guitar on his own. He seemed to relish it as Chino raved to MTV that Steph had some really great ideas and a ton of material. Clearly the creative juices were flowing, so much so that during the month of October 2007, the band had a little over a half of an album's worth of music done, with the next half assumed to be completed by the end of 2007. In January 2008, Kerrang met up with Moreno, where he revealed the working title for the new project slated for a late 2008 release, Eros. Along with the speed at which the music was being written, the lyrics for Eros were also coming in abnormally fast, thanks to the recapturing of the old synergy by playing together. Drummer Abe Cunningham said of Eros that the name came from their time touring Germany. When we first started touring Europe a lot, many years ago, we would always be going through Germany. We'd be in our hotel rooms, and for a lack of many channels, there'd always be some sort of German porn, and they would always say, Eros. It was just kind of funny, and it's been a joke for years. Of Eros. Chino said the sound was probably the most unorthodox work they had ever produced. He also said some songs had that good old fuck you I hope you die aggression. And he also said that it was weird with a lot of atmosphere and soundscaping. Cunningham said the album had a pretty lush production with jarring knife in your neck parts, but with floating on clothes beautiful things too. So yeah, definitely sounds like a Deftones album. Probably the only thing that was different was Abe's revelation that the songs were to be named after strippers. Destiny was one track with such a name. This then leads us to April 14, 2008. 
the reported beginning of the official studio work with Terry Date to make it sound great, and engineer Scott Olson, who famously played alongside Alice in Chains in their iconic MTV Unplugged show in 1996. Terry came in a week early to listen to what the band had cooked up and to do some pre-production work. However, according to turntablist Frank Delgado, recording may not have started until the last week in April because on May 8, 2008, he said to Blabbermouth, we're well into our first week of recording for the new record. Along with the writing, major revamping has got into the spot and from the sounds of it, it's definitely paying off. All of this work has allowed us to do what we've wanted for the longest time. Record a record at our pace, on our time, on our dime. Feels so good to be back with Terry and Scotty. Spirits are high, and so is Steph. We're on our way to making the best Deftones record yet. Oh boy. On July 30th, Cunningham shared that Deftones were almost finished tracking the new album before they headed to Date's studio in Seattle. But after some time in the studio, Deftones got busy spreading the gospel of the Greek God of Love. On September 18, 2008, Deftones played Melanie at Spaceland in Silver Lake, California, and again on September 19 in Ventura, California. September 20, however, was an interesting day. The Tones were back in Arizona and linked up with Max Cavallero, who joined the band on stage to perform Head Up as their closer. Deftones and Arizona seem to have a sordid history due to incidents prior to this performance. But unfortunately, this was the last time Chi Cheng would play live. On November 3, 2008, Chi Cheng, along with his sister Mei, were traveling from Santa Clara, California, after attending their late brother's memorial. The Cheng's vehicle, which was going 60 miles per hour, hit another car and flipped three times. Mei received minor injuries, but Chi, who unfortunately wasn't wearing his seatbelt, was ejected from the vehicle. May rushed to her brother's side and held his head before two off-duty paramedics arrived on the scene to help. They inserted a tube into Chi's throat, which allowed him to breathe and preserved his life before an ambulance arrived. For new and longtime fans who may want the specificities about this time, forgive me, I don't wish to put you or myself through the sordid and messy details. Suffice it to say, Chi was semi-comatose and contested numerous medical issues and surgical operations before a heart attack took him away from us on April 13, 2013, despite showing signs of improvement over the four and a half years, thanks in large part to experimental medicine and the love of his family, friends, and fans. Some of the beautiful things that came out of this harrowing situation was the One Love for Chi website where fans could donate to help with hospital fees and read about his status and progress from his family. It is because of these and other donations from benefit concerts, artwork, and compilations that Chi was able to eventually become semi-conscious and could even move his legs and hands and follow people with his eyes. He even managed to say some words. Buckle Up for Chi was founded to spread awareness on the efficacy of seatbelt usage and Fieldy from Corn, along with more of Chi's friends and colleagues, recorded a song for Chi, which also raked in funds for his recovery. So what became of Eros? With the dark days looming over the horizon yet again, Deftones had to make a choice. Continue to make Eros or shelf it to create something in Chi's honor. The band had already asked Sergio Vega to fill in for Chi as he had done a few times before, the first time being in 1992 when Chi broke his foot. Deftones needed a bassist for the Bamboozle Left Festival they had already booked which was to be held in April 2009 as well as Chi's benefit concert in November later that year. Ultimately, they decided to shelf Eros, and the members of Deftones didn't talk music for months, but at no point were they thinking of calling the band quits. 
quits, not after everything they had been through, and the reconciliation they now enjoyed after reclaiming their friendship. Abe said they didn't talk for four to five months. Chino said six months to a year. Regardless of the time, there came a point where the band got back together to play music again. Chino. We were sitting down and it was weird because all of our gear was set up like cheese bass. Everything was set up in a circle. That room was exactly the way we left it when we were working last. We started talking, we spent probably about an hour or two just sitting there talking about Chi, telling stories from our first days meeting him to where we were at that moment. At that point, instead of taking the conversation over to, so what do you want to do now? Everyone just sort of walked over to their gear like natural and we just started playing and at that moment, we started writing what would become Diamond Eyes. Abe said the first song they wrote for that album became what we now know as Royal. As for Eros, it was said that six tracks were completed with 75 to 80% of all instrumentals done, but we only know of a few tracks. Melanie, as was mentioned earlier, is as pummeling as it is melodic. A potential classic Deftones track, despite the noisy recording. And yet, this was to be outdone by a recording from the studio that was incomplete called Dallas. If Melanie was a potential classic, Dallas had the makings of a top 10 Deftones track of all time. The instrumentals are hauntingly beautiful. The friendship synergy was clearly at a peak on that one. The release of Eros is something that fans have waited with bated breath for. Both Abe and Chino have expressed ambivalence with its release, stating that it's good, but not good enough, and considering releasing it as an EP. When speaking to Yahoo in 2013, Chino had this to say on the potential release of Eros. Beforehand, I didn't think about it at all. Maybe it will come out, maybe it might not. Lately, I've been listening to some of it, and it's definitely hard to, because it's the last thing Cheese played on, and it's a very emotional thing. But there's really beautiful things on that record. And perhaps the most beautiful thing was a song Chino decided to mix, master, and release to the shock and awe of the band, the Deftones Faithful, and especially Warner Music Group. Smile was unleashed on the world on April 13, 2014, the one year anniversary of Chi Cheng's death. I'll sum up the impact of the song in a short but true story. About a year after the song dropped and Warner Brothers took it off of YouTube, I had it on my phone because, duh. My friend hadn't heard it though, so I aggressively gave him my phone and my earphones for him to listen. A little over a minute into the song, he said, yo, look at my arm. Dude had goosebumps the size of bubble wrap. The bass line in the pre-chorus is one of the sickest I've ever heard on any track in any genre of any lifetime I have ever lived. She was the superstar on a track where everyone absolutely crushed it. Great choice, Chino. That song quite literally changed the course of my life forever. For better and for worse, but mostly for better. I remember thinking when Chi first went into the coma that Deftones may have to call it quits after all. The irony that Deftones began partly due to Steph's car accident and could end because of Chi's car accident wasn't lost on me. The irony that both incidents were 20 years apart wasn't lost on me either. Maybe life had to play out these tragic scenarios for some reason. Maybe 20 years is enough. But Deftones persevered and I've released material they should be proud of since then. Fuck the dark days. Deftones stared into the abyss, and the abyss cowered. But to be fair, if all the tracks were to be named after strippers, I have yet to meet a stripper named Smile. Then again, it's not really my scene, so what do I know? Maybe the joke had run its course. Maybe Chino forgot about the Eros. Either way, I'm glad we heard the track. And lastly, here's Chi Cheng absolutely gushing about his excitement for Eros in June 2008. We've been locked into the studio, as you know, and are finishing the drum tracks on a song tentatively called Trempest. 
it's heavy as fuck with a shitload of groove and even though it's been driving me crazy as it runs through my insomniatic brain, I am really excited. I always say this shit, but I truly believe this album to be well worth the wait and I appreciate all your support and kind loyalty. The idea of finishing the album and getting out to play it in front of y'all is a nice light at the end of my tunnel. We intend to tour extensively, so don't fret. So do you think the album will ever see the light of day? Where were you the first time you heard Smile? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.